The I'm Van- excited to talk some Vandy. The Vanderbilt Commodores made one of the most uh, sensible head coaching hires uh, in, in all of college football, you go and you get Clark Lee, somebody who's just done, uh, he, he's done it at so many different levels. He's been so consistent, has a great vision, great connection to the program, very sensible hire, good hire, just absolutely bewildering general manager hire of Barton Simmons. Didn't understand it. Blindsided me, <laughs> caught me off guard entirely, but we'll, we'll see his, his impact on this roster is, is probably more as, as, you know, just trying to, you know, be a good sounding board. Uh, you know, he's also trying to make sure that the future is put together, that they do good with the evaluation. And so I feel like we'll continue to see his impact in the, in the seasons to come for this fall. Uh, I, I feel like I don't know. Um, I don't know specifically. We know Ken Seals is, is the quarterback to, to note and it seems to be that, that's going to be the, um, the plan. I don't know what the like scheme or what our offensive uh, approach is with this team. I assume that because we're Clark Lee, we're switching from a Derek Mason three, four to something that's going to be a little more traditional, but I mean, I wouldn't put it past uh, Lee to be doing some, you know, mixed formations. Hey, everyone's multiple and everyone's aggressive. You know, let's go back and tick off a couple more off the bingo board. But I, I think that, you know, if we can get anything from, from out of Vanderbilt spring practice, it's trying to get a better sense of what the identity of this team is. Yeah. And I, I think that's going to be the one thing that I'm paying more attention to than anything. I, th- I think you're right about what the defense is probably going to look like. If just judging off of the way that Notre Dame's defenses ran under Lee, and then even with, you know, Elko, who we coached under and kind of inherited from, they are defensively like they are three four, but they're a four three, and they're a two three three five. And there's you know it's it's really dependent on sub packages and what they want to do. That's why like you see certain players that are playing linebacker and safety seemingly at the same time in those defenses. So I think we're probably going to see an attempt to that. I don't know if they can get there right away in year one, but if there is any you know maybe a silver lining it is they Vandy does lose a lot of production on the defensive side. So. Maybe some guys that are on that roster aren't as certainly married or, you know, pegged into a certain role and will be able to adapt in different spots. Offensively, there's they're ranked 50th overall in the nation in returning production on offense. So I think that gives them a bit of a step up. I think Ken Seals, as a freshman last year, had his good moments, had his bad moments. And I think that you hope that he takes a natural progression and gets better offensively as a quarterback. But again, I don't know exactly what the offense is going to look like in 2021, what we're looking to run. Don't have anybody on that staff I could text and ask. At least I used to, but that they don't answer my texts anymore. They're, they're, they're big time at us. And I... I think that, like I mentioned, we were talking about Tennessee and South Carolina. I wouldn't be that shocked if if Vandy can win the Tennessee game, and I think that that's a very winnable game. This is a team that I think could get a couple SEC wins in 2021 just based on the fact that the rest of this division outside the two teams at the top isn't looking like it's going to be very good. So there's a lot of room for maneuvering. So I think this spring – the main focus will be on just figuring out what the plan is, who's going to be what, who's going to do where, introducing yourself, figuring out what you have. And then we'll probably have a better idea of what the team's going to actually look like come the fall. I, there, I just have so many questions about this Vanderbilt team. I, I don't know where to start, right? So, I mean, last year, if you look at their kind of post-game win expectancy, it was single digits or zero in all but one of their games. And even the one it wasn't was Mississippi State, 18%. Like, we know that Vanderbilt was playing at a a level of scholarships on a weekly basis that was Mm -hmm. – I mean, uh, that a lot of other leagues would have canceled the games for. And, indeed, some of their games did get canceled eventually. Um, I just don't – like, this is one of the the prime examples, I think, of – like, when we were talking to Bill on that episode about a month ago, how much stock do you put in the last season? Is that real? Because if so, they can improve a lot and still be the worst team in the SEC by a huge margin, right? Like there were 120th in SP plus last year. We only had like 126 teams playing because three or four didn't play. UConn won the the national championship. Right, exactly. (laughs) UConn's on Vandy's schedule. Do you guys have a good feel for who does like for which of the opt outs are back? No, no, because I don't either. Like I can't find it. And I've I've been looking and I'm actually uh, scheduled to talk to Robbie Weinstein. Uh, who runs our, our Vanderbilt site. And and I, 
I don't even think Vanderbilt has put this information out so far, at least not that I could find. So um, not knocking his coverage or the coverage of any of the Vandy media out there, just this is, I don't have a good feel for what this, this team is going to be entering spring. Cause I don't know who's back. And I don't know, like some of these guys might be pretty okay or pretty decent, but they didn't get to show it because they were playing with a bunch of dudes who were sort of like walk-on level at times last year. Right. I, this is probably the biggest wild card in the division. See, I want to be really honest with our listeners and, and give uh, a first impression that I really, I'm, I'm very curious and that I don't know. And that if, if I had just read to you whatever Barton's PR pitch was about how great all these guys were, that wouldn't be honest, right? That wouldn't be us really giving you what our thoughts are. No, we have texted with Barton recently, but it was about Brian Van Gorder getting a high school football <laughs> job. <laughs> and and if you've been listening to this podcast for a long time, I think that you would be happy to know that we weren't trying to get um, the easy answers or or whatever the like inside the staff PR pitch was to hype up the players. And we wanted to make sure that we were talking about finding ways that we could bet against Brian Van Gorder in high school football. <laughs> um, yeah, and it's. It is, uh, I, I think, Tom, the, my, my sort of strong point here uh, is, is thinking, like I'm coming back to what you said earlier, which is don't separate Vanderbilt from South Carolina and Tennessee. Yeah, it, I, I'll just, let's take it to what Barton said in his last appearance on the show was like, just in year one, probably going to, you know, Vanderbilt's going to be a team that you, you kind of look at and think that, you know, you're just going to beat. He, when he was making the plea for people to make Vandy their number two team, he's like, in year one, there's going to be, might be some rough times, but hopefully in year two, three or four, Vandy becomes a team where, you know what, they can't be your number two team anymore because now they're starting to beat your number one team. So I think that's kind of the approach that everybody should be taking with the Commodores this spring and into 2021 anyway. Yeah. Let's cover some spreads. Vanderbilt football, 2021. I do think offensively they're probably going to throw the ball around a lot more mm -hmm. than they did because they, they, they hired and forgive me. I forgot the guy's name here on my sheet, but he, he worked for, he worked for Kingsbury. So uh, my guess is some air raid principles there. I'm interested to see if they go, I just, I have a hunch here. This is not me talking to Barton, but I have, a, I wonder if they try to go sort of like jumbo air raid. You can get a lot of tight end types at Vanderbilt. Um, that, that would be just something unique and a little bit different. Yeah. David Ray, David Ray. There we go. Is that like they get the, the the high school basketball players and just sort of like get them who are smart, who like play, who like went to a really good prep school maybe, and then you can get yeah. them in there and just like, yeah, we can we can teach this guy how to play tight ends. You know, we can private teach schools in Atlanta, play. Nashville, Charlotte, they they do put out a decent number of tight ends relative to other positions. So you, you got to know where where your your recruiting base is and, and what they produce. So we've, many six seen, three guys that have tried to fight me in bars in Charlotte. <laughs> we've seen tight ends become more and more important in offenses as defenses kind of have evolved to try to cover like all these spread in these air raids, big body tight ends that can move going against linebackers that can't really tackle them are becoming somewhat of a, you know, a, a prized commodity. Free advice, Barton. You can pass it on to David Ray. We got you here on the cover three podcast.